Hi there, I'm Becky Hammond and welcome to Isogo TV. Uh, wherever you are on your strengths journey, I want to help you take your greatest strengths and apply them to your everyday work and your everyday life. Today we're talking about motivation. You know, motivation is one of those things that we all have experience with because either you're leading people who you feel like eh, just aren't quite motivated or you've been that person that just said, ah, I just, I'm just not motivated or as I say sometimes, I'm so not motivated to do this. <laughs> So what is it all about? What goes under, un, un, what underlies that? What can we do to impact that? And today I'm sharing one of the best tools that I know, or at least a really tangible, practical tool that you can start to use a, as a manager or a leader or hand off to the people that can influence that to get to the bottom of what really motivates the people that are around you. So join me for episode 22 as we dive in and explore what's ahead. Today, we're delving into motivation uh, and what our strengths say about what motivates you, what motivates me, and most importantly, perhaps, what motivates the people that are around us, especially if you're a manager or a team leader or own a business and you want people to do things for you. You know, the businessdictionary.com definition of motivation is a force or influence that causes someone to do something. And that force or influence can be internal or external. Uh, you know, in the recent movie, Unbroken, uh, the main character there, Louise Amparini, has gone through hardships and challenges like no human should ever have to face. And you kind of wonder what in the world was his motivation? How did he get through? And you can see that there was internal and external motivators. You know, maybe some of those internal motivators were um, pride, uh, they were service, they were maybe even vengeance. And those external motivators, it was about a will to live or to avoid pain that could happen to him. And at the end, you see him holding up this beam for the entire day and into the night. And you just wonder how in the world could he have kept his hands up like that? What was his motivation? And you could say there's definitely some internal and external motivators there. And when you bring it home back to our everyday work and our everyday life, you see that there are some internal and external motivators to everything that we do. You know, at work, for example, the external motivators are things like a paycheck, a bonus, a title. And internal motivators might be uh, a, a sense of competence or a sense of pride in what you do or believing in the company mission. Uh, and as a manager, it's hard to know which of these things uh, motivate the people that work for me. How can I get my people to do the things that I want them to do? You know, and as the uh, Harvard Business Review article uh, has said, it, motivation is not something that you do to people. Uh, so we have to have some other way to get about what motivates the individuals that are around us. It's in those patterns of thought, feeling, and behavior that come naturally to us that are part of our talents, our wiring, our strengths, that we start to get hints of what might be motivating the people that are around us. Uh, so for example, uh, someone with achiever, context, competition, learner, and harmony uh, approaches life by uh, uh, bringing old information and new information in to get the job done and be the best at it. And so an environment that would help motivate that person is maybe one where he could be compared to his peers or to uh, other people who are doing something similar in their industry. And he'll thrive in an environment where he has opportunities to learn, to gather new information, where there's a dynamic environment and that he's getting information that, that he can share and teach to other people. Uh, and another example, a manager friend of mine leads with maximizer, activator, achiever, responsibility, and individualization. So for her, uh, she thrives when she can identify somebody's uniqueness and help uh, orient that to get the job done and get it done well. So for her, uh, competence is extremely important. Uh, and seeing that people are willing to stick to their word and they can be relied on. 
And the, the thing about these strengths and our talents as being hints of motivation is that they're all uh, individual. That in order to motivate people, to help encourage them to do what you want them to do, it has to be approached from a, 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 them as an individual. You have to inv individualize. You know, we've talked a lot about that as being the most effective and the only thing that is really going to bring you to success as a manager is as you individualize. And motivation is no exception to that. So it's starting to use those strengths as a, a platform for having individual conversations with the people that you work with about what might motivate them. You know, another tool that uh, a, a lot of my colleagues use and some of the managers that I work with have found really useful is uh, a motivations sort. So you have the people uh, that work for you, one-on-one uh, -on -one in a one-on-one -on -one meeting or in a team environment, start to sort out what are the things that motivate them. You know, and there's a, a list of, let's say, common motivators that uh, you can start with that say, yeah, these things are always motivating, uh, somewhat motivating, or never motivating, and start having them identify what those motivators are. Uh, so for example, I have some of them right here in front of me. Um, maybe a motivator is earning a new title of their cho uh, choice. Maybe it's that one of their direct reports um, got promoted or got a reward. Maybe that's motivating to you. Uh, maybe it's being ranked as a, in your top 10 performer or getting a $50 bonus for customer satisfaction or even just a 10% raise. Or, or maybe it's one-on-one -on -one, uh, recognition and commendation for your performance in a meeting, just kind of you and your manager. Or maybe it's getting recognized, yeah, but in front of everybody. You know, each person is going to feel differently about how those things motivate them. For some people, being standing up in front of a crowd and getting recognized could be a demotivator, saying, oh my goodness, I don't ever want that to happen to me again, so I'm just going to do a little bit less than what I did last time so that I don't get that type of recognition. That's not motivating to them. And that's where it all comes down to the individual and individualizing them, having uh, meaningful, intentional conversations based on their strengths and the motivators that are available to you to offer them, to get them to do those things that you really want them to do. So let's use this. How do we go about really getting to the bottom of what motivates us or what motivates the people that are around us? And it starts with knowing their strengths, identifying those things that come most naturally to them that are all about the way that they tick. Because once you find out the way they tick, you start getting hints at what those motivators are. So you can do that by asking them questions. You can do that by watching some previous Isogo TV episodes about how do I understand my strengths or my favorite, which is the Strengths Finder tool by the Gallup organization to really put a language around what those strengths are. And then second, you sit down and have a dialogue, a conversation with the people that you're trying to motivate, that you're trying to understand what are those either external or internal factors that really will help get you on board or help make you tick or get you to do what I want you to do. So you can start asking them questions. And if you want a shortcut around that to help get to the bottom more quickly or give you some ideas as to what some common motivators might be, especially in the workplace, then I want to share that motivation sort tool with you that I referenced in the video. We're gonna have it over at isogostrong.com in association with episode 22. And it gives you some really fabulous ideas and it really can be an amazing tool for you to use in maybe your next team meeting or your next one-on-one -on -one meeting as you're trying to get to know your people better to help them flourish in an environment that helps the organization flourish as well. So thanks for helping me get the word out about Isogo TV by sharing it with your friends, either in electronic social world or with the people that you are rubbing shoulders with every day. Thank you for joining me here today and I hope that I see you along next week on Isogo TV.